welcome to JHEP and World of Ed's lesson on orbital overlaps and the formation of covalent bonds. For this, this is a further reading. Um, this is a further reading lesson because this is not a requirement for any of these examples, um, OCI, AQN, and Excel, to my to the best of my knowledge. But it is good for you to actually have a look at how covalent bonds are actually formed in detail, especially if you want to do chemistry in university. And if you are doing OCR before you've started looking at the delocalized model of benzene, because if you actually understand this, understanding how the pi bonds overlap in benzene will be a doddle. As for AQA, you can, this might have some relevance to your unit in unit four and bonding in benzene, but you know, it's not that much of an importance. And for Edexcel, Unit 5, I don't think you need to have a look at this at all. Just for the fact that for benzene, you just need to have a look at how they react and how you actually draw the skeletal formula of it. So, moving on. So, the first thing you should know is that covalent bonds form when orbitals overlap. So, let's say we have... Um, hydrogen chloride, I'm calling it hydrogen chloride for, uh, for now, okay, hydrogen, hydrochloric acid, that will be under aqueous, but we don't need to learn, we don't need to worry about that, hydrogen chloride, we know that hydrogen has got one electron on its shell, okay, and we know that that belongs to the s orbital, purely because it is on the s block, of the period of the table as well and for chlorine oh, and it's the only electron as well for chlorine we have got seven ele electrons so we've got one two let's say that this belongs to the s orbital three four this belongs to the p orbital five six this belongs to the second p orbital seven now this p orbital requires one electron and this s orbital requires one electron so what actually happens well so let's say we've got our s orbital here and we've got our p orbital right here so if my horrible drawing of a p orbital but we get the whole idea of it so what happens is the p orbital basically overlaps the s orbital like so and then we've got essentially our electrons with opposite spins remember and basically this is called a sigma bond because there are two types of bonds and you will learn that in this lesson there's a sigma bond and a pi bond but let's have a look at the sigma bond first this is a sigma bond when two atomic orbitals overlap at any one point we have a sigma bond it might not just be with an s orbital and a p orbital it might happen with a p and a p orbital or it may happen with a d and a d orbital as well hmm. might happen with a d and a d orbital so moving on we know how to form a covalent single bond okay so we know how to form this but what about when we want to form a double bond like for example in ethene when we've got a c to c double bond right there so let's have a look let's forget about the h's first of all the um the what's it the hydrogen and let's focus on the C. So we've got the sigma bonds. I've already done that for you. The two pi bond, um, the two p orbitals have overlapped to make the sigma bonds. In detail, we will do that in much more detail because that 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 statement wasn't a hundred percent accurate. But you would understand why it's not accurate later on. So we've got this sigma bond right here forming from the two p orbital overlaps and we've got this p orbital as well we've got p orbital over here for carbon and we've got this p orbital here for carbon remember there's three 
P orbitals in carbon. So we've already used up one and we've got one here, we've got the other one just somewhere. And what happens is that these orbitals actually stretch, not stretch, but they come towards each other and overlap to make it look like a burger, to make it look like a pi bond burger, should we say, or a sigma bond burger. And these bonds over here are called pi bonds. Okay, spelled P-I, not P-I-E. Okay, so as a recap, these, the bottom halves of these P orbitals overlap each other. So they come towards each other and overlap. And so does the top half of these P orbitals. And remember, they all contain electrons. And so we've got these pi bonds and we've got this sigma bonds. Sigma bonds are very strong. Sigma bonds relatively, the electrons in it just stay there, relative, okay? They do move about, but they relatively stay there compared to pi bonds, where pi bonds just jump around all the time. This goes between this pi bond to the next pi bonds, okay? From this pi bond to this pi bond. It, it, yeah, that's what usually happens. And so because of that, the nuclei favours the sigma bonds because it's actually very electron dense, it's very electron rich. And it says so right here, pi bonds are held less strongly than sigma bonds, which allows the alkene, because remember this is an alkene, we're looking at, um, we're looking at, um, what's it, ethene, and that's what makes this ethene to be very active, to very reactive because these pi bonds are very, very hyper, shall we say. And especially when we have stuff like electroaddition and bromination as well, when we add bromine to it to desaturate it, when we've got the bromine, we've got all these electrons rushing over to these bromines. And remember, the bromine split as well for electrophilic addition, but let's not get onto that. That will be in um, unit, I think OCR unit 2's video um, of electrophilic addition. So that's AS. So that's, that's the basic overview of how bonds form. And I think you, do, you did need to know this for AS. But we're going to introduce a little bit of stretch and challenge. Okay, it's my way of stretch. It's my way. It's my way of stretching and challenging. Um, the details behind covalent bonding in carbon. So we're going to have a look at carbon. Carbon. We know that the electronic configuration of that is two s two, two p two. Okay, we. I know that there's a one s two as well here, but let's forget about that. And if you have a look at these boxes, you might be familiar with these boxes, but these are a great way of representing how electrons are filled within the orbitals. So we've got this 2s orbital here, we've got the 2p orbitals over here as well. So, if we fill it out, we've got the s orbitals filling out, so we've got the first s orbital, the first electron, sorry, the second electron, the third electron and the fourth electron. Okay, if you do not um, remember this, uh, think about it. Think about being on a bus and and this being seats. You would not want to just automatically sit next to the next person when there's lots and lots of seats available. And that's what electrons do. They find other empty seats. Okay, now. What happens is that carbon promotes. Carbon is like IBM with its promotion companies and packages, and it promotes the one of the electrons in the s orbital to go to the p orbital. So, in actual fact, it would actually look like this: one, two, three. Okay. So now we've got four opportunities for stuff to bond to it. Over here, we only had two. But now, we've got four opportunities to do so, okay? We're having, so let's say, for example, we have CH4, 
okay we've got a hydrogen um electron bonding over here bonding over here bonding over here bonding over here so that's how we get ch4 without this we can only have ch2 so what happens now is a process of hybridization and what that basically means is uh, it all the elect all the orbitals coming together and combining and mixing each other all around to form a hybrid a hybrid meaning a product which contains in this context both an s orbital and the p orbital all stuck together and if we have a look at it if we have a look at it over here we have got an s orbital here and we've got the p orbitals we've got the pz py and px and hybridization happens over here to form a hybrid in this case it is called oops hold on in this case it is called sp3 okay because the s orbital has been hybridized with the p orbitals with the p3 so s plus p3 making sp3 okay maybe we shouldn't say adding maybe we should say times in more anyways that's more mathematical way but this is an sp3 orbital and as you can see we've got this is the way i draw this is the way that we can draw it we've got the s orbital at the bottom here and the p orbital at the top this is just to symbolize that we've got the s and the p orbital just stuck together okay some people might draw it like this or like this it at this stage in a level i shoot it doesn't really matter so we've got sp3 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 so in this case we have got four sp3 orbitals right here okay so if we fill this out we've got the electron here electron here electron here and electron here and we've got four opportunities for anything with one electron to bond to it to make whatever to make a single covalent bond and over here, we've got a, um, a diagram of it. And you should know that these sp3 orbitals have got equal repulsion. Okay, so they repel equally. So that's why when I said um, over here, where was it? Uh, I can't remember where I said it. But I said that the p orbitals um, uh, overlap. Let's not even, yeah, let's not even get to that just yet. No, we've got sp3 and they've got equal repulsion, which leads to a tetrahedral structure and has a bond angle of 109.5. Sounds like a radio station, but there you go. And now we've got, we can also, if you want, add in the s orbitals of hydrogen. Three. And that's H, that's hydrogen, 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 and that is CH4, basically. This is a website, this is an animation which I came across because I found when I looked at the delocalized model of benzene, I freaked out, I nearly fainted. It was too overwhelming for me to actually look at it because all I saw was just just lots and lots of diagrams and just like what was happening so i had a look at this this website it's going to be on the youtube link somewhere and it basically explained i look i had it muted because i didn't know it actually had sound but i had a look at it and it showed how hybridization actually works and it shows how it combines each other and um what's it and forms the sp3 orbitals so have a so have a look at that <clears throat> now, with double bonds over here, hybridization forms three sp2 orbitals instead of four sp3 orbitals. Why? Because we need a normal p orbital 
to stretch over each other, like so, and overlap each other, to form the pi bonds. Okay, so what happens if we write it in, in an equation, we've got the s orbital plus two of the p2 orbitals. That's wrong. Plus p2. There's, um, what's it, two? Yeah, and then that would make three sp2. Okay, and there is a pattern as well. And we would make um, 3sp2 and we would have one normal p orbital and then what happens is that we've got I've just labeled it out for you so it kind of looks like this we've got the sp2 orbital here we've got another sp2 orbital here and we've got another sp2 orbital here and then what happens is that it overlaps um, and we've got the um, we've got the electrons of opposite spin showing each other over there and we've got the hydrogen here, the hydrogen here, hydrogen here, hydrogen here. And then what happens is that the p orbitals, they lean forward, shall we say, and overlap each other. And so that does the bottom part as well. And it looks like this sigma burger with the pi bonds like that and the sigma bonds in the middle. That's with triple bonds, by the way, one last thing before we finish. With triple bonds, hybridization just forms two pi m. Well, it forms what's it? It forms two p orbitals and two sp orbitals as well. So two sp orbitals and two normal p orbitals, and then basically this process happens again to make the pi bonds and the sigma bonds. And a suitable example for that will be ethyne. It depends how you would like to pronounce it, but I call it ethyne. E-T-H-Y-N-E. -E. And that is it for this stretch and challenge uh, type concept to it. I hope with this you'll be able to now have a look at the delocalized model of benzene and think, oh my gosh, this is easy. Why did I not get this when I first glanced at it and thought, oh my gosh, this was hard. Okay, and that is it.